By the age of 26, Robbie Rogers had achieved everything he'd ever dreamed of and worked so hard to get. He'd made it as a professional footballer here in the States. He had a good club career and played in Europe too. He represented his country 18 times. Then, in February 2013, he did two things that he had sworn he would never ever do. He decided to walk away from football and he announced that he is gay. He did this by posting a letter on his website for the world to see. We travelled to Los Angeles to speak to Robbie and some of his teammates to hear more about his journey and their thoughts on gay people in sport. OK, we're ready. Tell me the sort of things that were going through your mind, the sort of things you were weighing up before you made your decision in February to come out. Um, for my sanity, it was for myself that I need to do this. Um, Nothing else is really going through my mind, you know, football and uh, what, you know, the reaction, the possible reaction of everything. I wasn't really thinking about it, I was thinking about, okay, I need to do this for myself, I need to be honest with people, be open with people so that I can just carry on with my life or with my new life, you could say. Um, so, you know, of course there was a fear that we talked about and all that stuff, but I knew that it was something that I had to do so that I could um, live a real life. At that point, were you convinced, though, that it was the end of you as a footballer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100% convinced that I was done. <laughs> uh, which is so stupid looking back. Looking back, I'm like, I don't know why I thought that, and I don't know why I was so afraid to, to be you know, a gay soccer player or a gay athlete. But um, you know, it was a learning process for me, and I think it's been a learning process for everyone. Why were you so afraid, and what were the things that made you afraid? I guess I had no one to look up to that's done it before. You know, that kind of, you know, you ask your, like, questions like why, why not? Um, hearing things in football locker rooms and soccer locker rooms, you know, growing up and I guess even hearing them when you're growing up and in school, you know, it's, uh, it kind of sticks with you. But then after this whole process, you know, I've had so much support that, you know, I think it's, you know, about exposure and about someone doing it and about, um, you know, setting an example for people. This has certainly gone, I think, you know, maybe help uh, certainly a lot of people that just kind of frightened to come out and uh, frightened of the, the abuse that they probably will get. Uh, but I don't think that would be the case anymore. I think times have completely changed now from even five years ago, ten years ago. It's, uh, it's a sort of, it's a modern day thing that it's, it's, it's acceptable in life now. And, and people like Robbie coming out and... Um, and of course, the, the basketball uh, guy coming out also. Jason Collins. Yeah, I might, you know, I might give other people, you know, you know, it's okay for me to come out because uh, for them it's been a positive influence rather than a negative one. I'm sure it's uh, a very emotional and stressful time for any gay person to come out anyway. Yeah. Is it harder, do you think, for a sports person? Um, I think, like you said, it's 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 hard. You know, I've heard stories from people from all around, people from all around the world, and it's very difficult. To, you know, everyone has their story. I think in sports, it's just so difficult because you do something that you're so passionate about, you've worked so hard, and the thought or the idea that you could lose that all just because of you know your sexual orientation is is uh, you know it just brings a lot of fear. You're just really worried about losing that. So. I would say yes, probably. I think it's, you know, just because there aren't really any gay athletes. So, I mean, obviously, obviously it's hard. Quite a lot of athletes come out after their career. Yeah. But you're virtually the only footballer playing at the top level yeah. who's come out. Why do you think that is? I think it's just because of fear, you know. It's a great question, you know, why, especially after now that I've done it and I've had such great support, you know, why haven't more come out to do it? Um, I still think people are very afraid to um, kind of take that risk. Um, but you know, now that I'm going back and you know, starting to train with the Galaxy and play with the Galaxy, I hope to change that you know, in any way that I can. I hope that you know, the other athletes that uh, are competing in their sports will be more vocal and help change that because obviously there are certain things that need to, need to change. Um, but that's a really great question. You, know, you would think by now, you know, I, I've been contacted by people all over the world, but I haven't had one footballer send me a message saying, Hey Robbie, I'm gay as well. Like, you know, can you go through the process with me or talk to me about how, you know, you did it? So, it's uh, it's interesting. You think you know someone would? Was that actually 
one of the reasons that you didn't want to come out was because you didn't want to be the yeah. first, you didn't want to be the spokesman, yeah. you didn't want to be the icon. Yeah, I mean, that's why I thought there's no possible way I'm coming back to football. That's why um, after I posted that letter and a letter that I was never going to post, um, it took me a while to do interviews and I just didn't want to be, um, you know, shoved in that spotlight and um, have to constantly talk about it. But after I realized the impact it made on people, um, you know, I learned that this is something that I need to do. This is something that is in my DNA. This is something that um, I really want to do is to help people and to uh, share my story with people to help, you know, push the, the sport forward. But you actually walked away from football. You yeah. said you were done with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought that, the, that, that I was done with it, that, uh, you know, I knew it would be really difficult and uh, it was difficult for those, those few months. But I was dead set on uh, just being open and honest with people and just continue on with, with my life. Why do you think it has taken this long for a top level footballer to be comfortable? Well, I'm no expert. I mean, who knows? I can't imagine what it's like to carry that, right? So, um, you know, in my own life, I've talked openly about um, we all have different struggles we go through. I've been to therapy for many of years now, and when I have some sort of smaller issue that I finally figure out, it's very relieving. And then I think about someone like Robbie and what he's been carrying, the, the weight of that, and then letting that go and how relieving that must be. So um, I don't know why it took so long. Um, I'm just glad that we can start having this conversation and then we can just move on and it's not an issue anymore. He's probably not the only footballer in the world who is gay. He's the only one that's openly admitted that, that he's gay. And I, I think it's, it's, it's fears in the different societies that footballers live. And I, I think uh, uh, gay athletes still aren't uh, fully comfortable uh, coming out. And I think in the United States, as, as you've witnessed, that's been uh, a more uh, open situation over the last couple of years. Uh, and I, I think when Robbie did come out, he retired. And I think he retired because of the fact that he felt that it, uh, it wouldn't be a comfortable situation for him. Once he came back to the United States and thought about the environment here, and the fact that we'd probably be accepting it was something he wanted to do again. He loves playing football and he, that's what he wants to do and, and, and in my view there's no reason why he shouldn't be given that opportunity. Is it too strong to say, or let me ask you, is football homophobic? I, I think football culture is a bit homophobic. I don't think footballers are homophobic and I think if you get most football fans by themselves they're not homophobic. But I think that uh, football can be quite brutal sometimes and um, I think that's just the awareness of what people are saying and how it really affects people. I think we're made to be sort of heroes and robots almost sometimes. Um, people I often hear the comment, well you guys make so much money you should just do whatever's asked of you or you should do whatever's said and you should have no feelings and you shouldn't care about anything. Um, we're all human beings, right? So whether you make a lot of money, whether you don't make a lot of money, whether you have brown skin or white skin, you have a certain sexual preference, you come from a certain background, we all have feelings, we all have issues, we all have things we're dealing with. So hopefully, you know, there's always gonna be competition in sport. It's part of what we do, but hopefully at some point we can all stop and have a little bit more respect and compassion and say, you know what? maybe he's going through something difficult or maybe he's had a rough day or maybe there's something we're not sure about him maybe we should be a little more compassionate and be a little kinder and i think that'd be good for everybody you spent some time in england do you think it would have been more difficult for you to come out there um you mean while i was playing definitely uh or at least that's what I, that's how i felt and that's how you know I don't know because no one's ever done it, but I very much felt like I needed to take a step away and do it and um, on my own terms. I, w I would imagine that if I was still playing at Leeds and I would have done it, then um, yeah, I very much they would have had more control of who they wanted me to speak with and um, kind of in charge of the whole you know media uh, PR side. So I wanted to be in charge of all that stuff and um, not be part of this huge circus, I guess. And maybe it wouldn't have been that. But that's just the way I felt. So, I don't know, I just felt like I should do it on my own terms. Also, was there part of you that wanted to come home and do yeah. it in an, in an environment where you are 
very comfortable and very happy. Yeah. Although at the time you sent the letter announcing you were actually yeah. in, in London, weren't you? Yeah, I was in London, and then the next day I went to like Brighton to run a half marathon, and just like continued on with it. But uh, yeah, I mean now that I'm, I've decided that I'm gonna come back and play. I very much want to do it here where my family and friends are because I, I think I need that, you know, that core foundation, those people to support me through. Uh, whatever might happen, you know, maybe nothing will happen. It'll be totally normal, but um, I still want that support system to really help me. And um, I don't know. I think that the football culture in England, in the UK, is a bit still behind. In uh, you know, I still think a bit more homophobic and a bit more racist than it is here. I don't know why that is, but for some reason, I just I felt that way. I felt that way. I think because of the, the nature of the games, especially probably in England more so than, than anywhere, sort of the, the abuse the, the players get over there is probably you know, a little, little bit different than what it is in America, to, to be totally honest with you. you know? How long do you think before players will feel comfortable about coming out in the UK? How far behind are we? I think we're behind. I think, I think behind, I think maybe a good few years, I think, to be totally honest with you. Football here still isn't as relevant, obviously, as it is in the UK or in Europe. Um, it's hard to know, you know, if if and when Robbie is playing, we'll see um, when he travels, when he goes on the road, how people treat him. Um, I'm sure there's some sets of fans in different cities in America that will not accept what he's doing, just like there's probably people in the UK or part of Europe who don't accept what he's doing. So it's hard to know. but. Um, the important thing is that he's taking the first step and, and he's, he's hopefully encouraging others to do the same and all we can do is be supportive. You as media can be supportive, us as teammates can be supportive, fans can be supportive. It doesn't mean you have to like the guy, it doesn't mean you have to root for him if you're an opposing fan, but just treat him like everybody else. And um, I guess that could mean that, that he, gets, he gets battered a little bit from the fans, but that's okay and that's part of it, but hopefully there's at least some underlying respect. He strongly indicated that uh, after some thought and, and then training a little bit with us, uh, he, he wanted to uh, step away and, and, and think about whether he wanted to play again, and, and he's decided now that uh, his retirement is no longer retirement. Robbie Rogers totally convinced himself that in order to come out, he simply had to quit the game that he loved, permanently. But he very soon realised that not only did he desperately miss football, but also there was absolutely no reason why his sexuality should stop him from being a footballer. So the support I got was amazing, and you know, you, you would hope that everyone has that kind of support. Um, but, you know, just slowly missing it more and more, and then I watched some football clips of me training that the Galaxy sent to, I think it was CNN or whatever, and I was missing it, and then I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go back and, you know, do something that, you know, people haven't done before, and, you know, I'm, sh you know, and, and at first it was, I'm just gonna go back and train and see how that is. So go back and train, and then when I realized that it's not a big deal and that I loved it and that uh, I really missed it, I was like, you know, this is fine, this is not a big deal. He strongly indicated that uh, you know, uh, after some thought and, and then training a little bit with us, uh, he, he wanted to uh, uh, step away and, and, and think about whether he wanted to play again. And, and he's decided now that uh, his retirement is no longer retirement. And, and he, he wishes to play and he'd like to be playing in Major League Soccer and, and specifically uh, near his home, which uh, in this case is the Los Angeles area. And he's. He's asked if we would be interested in, in, in trying to uh, pursue, pursue that opportunity for him. Did you at any point, because you are in charge of a group and you have to think about anything that affects the dynamic, at any point did you consider his now public sexual orientation? Uh, I considered it slightly. I, I think uh, uh, whether anyone realizes or not, it's. it's it's the year 2013 in the United States, and uh, uh, we are a very tolerant society. We have laws that, that support uh, people's sexual orientation. Uh, uh, we're a melting pot as a country. We've always accepted people with all different values and cultures. And Major League Soccer is a pro progressive league. Uh, we're tolerant, we're accepting of uh, people's different sexual orientations. Uh, did I need to consider it? Uh, I, I, when I mentioned this to a team, I said, uh, our, uh, 
our culture in our locker room shouldn't change. There's nothing, nothing new. We all know Robbie. He's a good person. He's a good player. Uh, we accept them with open arms. And I was scared, I and mean, I was scared to go back just because I guess you build up in your head that you're going to go in a place where you're completely different and that, you know, not that people weren't going to accept you, but that, you know, you were going to be treated differently. So I was worried about that. But, you know, after the first day, even after like the first few hours, I was like, oh, this is totally normal. And, you know, I did my rehab uh, last year after I broke my ankle at Leeds. And, you know, going and seeing those guys and seeing like the physios and all those guys and them giving me a hug and just like not asking me anything about, you know, this whole experience, but just be like, oh, so what's up? Like, what have you been up to? Like, what did you, you know, do last weekend or whatever? And it's just totally normal. So um, I don't know what, again, I don't know what I was so worried about. How quickly did it settle down into a normal pattern with the guys giving you stick and abuse just <laughs> like they would each other? Yeah, I still think they're they're growing into that role, but um, you know there have been some jokes going around. So, I mean, I think it's hilarious. You know, of course. Presumably, think, you welcome that because it means you're being treated exactly the same exactly. as anybody else. And that's what you want to be treated. You want to be treated. I mean, guys make fun of each other for what they're wearing, for who they're dating, for everything. So, you know, I wanted to be treated the same as everyone else. We're really proud of him. Um, for us, it's been pretty seamless. I think the first couple days, there was some hesitancy, some you know, be careful what you're saying. But uh, now it's, uh, it's not an issue and, and we don't think about it, we don't talk about it and he's just treated like another one of the guys which is I think how everyone wants it. He's been funny about it, he talks about it, he's open about it. Uh, I think if he was sort of a little standoffish or a little hesitant then it would make other people sort of walk on eggshells but um, he's been great and I think that's part of it. I think that's been an important part that he can just laugh about it and joke about it and then we just get on with it. As long as you come in, you're a good player and you're, you're accepted as, as just one of the lads and, and well, there's, there's, there's certainly no problem as, as, as far as I'm concerned and, and, and speaking on, on most of the lads and, and, and their feelings, it's the same thing and, you know, it shouldn't be any, it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous the, the fact that we're even speaking about it, you know, everybody's the same, everyone is equal. Because he is likely to become a figurehead, a spokesman, somebody who young people look to for advice, he will be an extremely important person to the gay community particularly. Did you have to take that into account because of the potential circus that might follow it? I consider it, but I, I think that's, that's outstanding. And, and let me tell you, we've had prominent players here before. David Beckham... Uh, uh, so if you can what, deal with that. David Beckham wasn't hiding in a corner in his uh, six years here in Los Angeles. And, and I, I think uh, whatever attention Robbie Rogers brings to us, uh, he, that, that's fine. And, and we accept it and uh, we'll be very supportive. What do you think the future holds for you? We'll obviously definitely go back to football and try to, you know, keep improving and, and, and help, you know, the team I'm on. And, you know, if that goes well, maybe I can get back with the national team. and. You know, if that get, goes well, you know, who knows, maybe I'll go back to Europe. But uh, I'm excited just to get back to training every day and showing people that, like, it's not a big deal and that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to happen. There's going to be, you know, gay sportsmen in, all around the world and it's inevitable. You know, it's just, you know, it's going to happen. So just hope to continue to educate people that way and then just get on with my football. You know, I've said that. There was no way I was going to go back to soccer, or let's even say there was no way I was going to come out even to my family. And I did that, and there was no way I was going to come out to the public. Did that, no way I was going to come out to football. And then obviously now I'm back. So, I mean, I guess there's you know possibilities. I don't, I can't, I can't keep saying that because I just like you know keep turning around. So we'll see. Having spoken much about his personal life, is he any good? <laughs> well, I think he's good. I mean, we've played uh, since he was young. We've we've played with and against each other. So uh, I think he's a talented player. I think he's a very good player. Um, what sort of player is he? Uh, he's, he's a clever player. He's, he's got pace. He's good with both feet. Um, he's just a kind of a true wide player um, that's sort of gone away in, in football these days. Uh, there's not too many wide players that are true wide players anymore. Um, he's just very talented. And I think we're all sort of excited, you know, wherever he ends up playing. Um, just to see how he is now, that he's sort of let go of all that that he was holding on to and see how much better he is because of it. Now I'd love to get back to, you know, fit to my fitness and get sharp again and get back to playing games every week. So that's, you know, the first step. 
But, you know, I, I think any footballer will say they play their best when they're, they're happiest. So I'm interested to see, you know, where, you know, where my football goes, you know, how well I do and, and where I can improve, you know, now because everything off the field is so much better than it was before. So uh, I'm excited to see, you know, what, um, what comes up in the future. How far can he go? Well, I'm hopeful he can get back to be, become a very good player. You know, that, that remains to be seen. He had three or four months off, so his fitness level, his touch isn't quite there. But, uh, you know, we know Robbie and, and, and believe that uh, as he continues to train and, and feels more comfortable, there's no reason to believe that he can't come back and, and be a very good player. Where would you like football to be with people's sexuality in the uh, next few years? Yeah, I think the ultimate goal is for it just not to be an issue and just to be judged, you know, plainly on just how like how your football is, you know, how well how well you play on on the weekends or midweek, you know, whenever that may be. So I think, you know, the ultimate goal is that we don't need to have this conversation. Robbie's journey became complete when after three months out, he made his debut for the LA Galaxy, coming on as a substitute to a standing ovation. Having had such a positive response himself, he's now hoping to use his high profile to help others. He's supporting a campaign which encourages people to get beyond their prejudices. Well, this is something that I'm very, very excited about, and the first time I saw it actually it gave me the chills. What's up, guys? <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is selling pins to raise money to um, raise money for nonprofits. So, you know, it's going to be a global, global thing, and I'm really, really excited about it. So it's the Beyond It campaign. Right now, we're working with Robbie to create the badge of support, which is going to be a visual uh, identifier to show the world that you're beyond, uh, beyond not just homophobia, beyond racism, sexism, disabilities. Is there a difficult balance for you to find in being the spokesman, uh, the, the focal point for gay footballers, and also being viewed purely as a footballer yourself in your own right? Yes and no. I think just m me going back and playing, I think that does both. You know, I think that is me being a footballer and then people saying, okay, he is gay, so you're more, you know, you're walking the walk. You know, you're not just talking. So, I mean, it's simple that way. You go back, you play, people know your story, and that speaks for itself. Well, I for one wish you all the very best. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you,